Hey guys and welcome back to the yearly review video. It's just a really nice way to recap back through a really cool year and a lot of different products and talk about the ones that I really, really loved. Which ones have really stood the test of time over this year. As you know, I'm a beauty blogger as well as a fashion blogger and therefore I have used a lot of products this year from a lot of different brands from luxury to low end and I feel I've kind of got to grips with what I've really loved for me personally. So this video is going to be a roundup of all the products I really really loved. I feel like if they're featured in this video they were pretty darn special. So I've gone through my bathroom and my office collecting products. I'm just going to pull them out and go through them. Let's get started first of all with skincare. So first things first, favourite eye makeup remover of the year is Vichy's Pure Eat Thermal Waterproof Eye Makeup Remover. It removes waterproof eye makeup better than anything else apart from maybe Chanel's but this is a more affordable version on the high street and it just does the trick so well. Favourite cleanser? This was difficult. I have so many cleansers right now. It was a little bit extreme. However, straight away I locked eyes at this one I was like, yeah, you were the one for me. Yves Lom's Cream Cleanser. This is just one bad boy of a cleanser. I love how oily it is. It's kind of an oily gel cream. It almost feels a little, almost slightly gritty when you put it on. I just find, and the smell, so spa-like. It's just beautiful and it just melts down your makeup better than anything else. And then I will, so I add that all over my face and then I use this, which is my favourite tool of the year, which is a Foreo cleanser. This is a tough one because I do also really adore the Clarisonic. But this one, I find, is a little less abrasive, more everyday use for me. I use it twice a day without fail. I just don't feel right if I haven't exfoliated. If I haven't cleansed with this, I just don't feel right. Who sneeze? Um, yeah, so the Foreo, definitely my favourite. Couldn't live without it. With the Yves Lom is a winner. Favourite time of the year, I've used many. This is the one I went back to the most last year. I definitely have some new ones recently. I've been using more than this, but I feel overall for the entire year, this was the best for me. It was the Saint Tropez One Hour Tan. This is the, in fact, I think it's just in one colour, yeah. Now it says here, use it for three hours to get a dark tan. I would use it overnight. I'd cover my body in it, put my tanning onesie on, get in bed, sleep in it, wake up, wash myself the next day. So I probably had like eight hours nine, maybe ten hours in it, but I just loved the tan it gave. Um, yeah, it's a good one. Favourite hand cream of the year has to be this one from Hand Chemistry. This is the 24% Active Complex Extreme Hydration Concentrate. I love the fact this is almost like a gel, gel cream. Um, it's completely clear and transparent when you put it on, but it has that almost silicone feeling. It just feels like it's adding, it's a bit like if you've ever used Benefit's Professional Primer, it feels a bit like that, but for your hands. It's really soft and smooth and silky, it makes your hands feel incredible, it's extra intense and um, moisturising and it's really beautiful, so that easily my fave. For moisturiser, night moisturiser specifically, the Lancome Visionaire Nuit Beauty Sleep Perfector. Oh my god, I love this. Very soon I'll be doing a nighttime skincare routine video because I want to tell you all about my nighttime routine because I'm just so in love with it right now. It's just my best routine I've ever had. I feel very, very happy with it. And this is part of that. And this is beautiful. I was shown this by one of the girls at L'Oreal because Lancome is owned by L'Oreal. This is wonderful. It's just this kind of like bouncy gel kind of feeling. Um, like you've got to kind of almost scoop a bit to get it out. And it's just, it just melts into the skin. I love it. I just love it, it's beautiful. Favourite perfume of the year? Overall, it's gotta be this one. This is my favourite every single year, the Victor and Roll Flower Bomb Extreme. Only comes in a 50ml size, and for that it's about £70. This is one price, a little perfume, but I truly adore it. It's like my signature scent. But I also want to mention one other that hasn't been a signature scent before, but it's definitely one that I have probably adored the most, and it's the Tom Ford Costa Azura. Anything, the, any of the kind of special private blends that Tom Ford do are just extremely stunning to smell. But this one, I feel it's just absolutely beautiful. Put a bit on now. There's just something somewhat masculine about it, but yet yeah, it has these feminine notes. It's so alluring. It's absolutely beautiful. Okay, what else is in this bag? Okay, hair. 
Oh my gosh, by far my favourite ever dry shampoo. This stuff changed my life when I found out about it about three, four months ago. This is just so fantastic. I hate using dry shampoos that when you put them in your hair, you literally cannot put your hands through your hair because it's just this matted, gross mess. Hate that so much. And this is one of the things that I've found that doesn't do that. It's really light. It's a pillar proof blow dry two day extender oil absorbing dry shampoo but it's really really light I just put it through a kind of pick up sections spray it through I can still put my hands through my hair rub it through it doesn't leave any kind of white bits or white mess in all of your hair it's really amazing I just can't love this anymore for hair volumizing um, I love putting mousses in my hair after I have washed them. Before I dry them, I will use a mousse and I'll put a big bowl full of mousse in my hands, rub them together, turn my hair upside down and rub it through. And this has become my one and only. It's the Red Ken Guts 10 Volume Spray Foam. And you can just spray it into your hair if you want to, fair enough. But like I said, I just still spray it into my hands, rub them together and rub it through. And I find it gives a lot of volume. I used this earlier, it's still quite volumised. I've washed it and I've curled it. It smells lovely, it's sound quality, it's good in. And my favourite hair oil, as always, is the Moroccan oil treatment. I know some people don't like this because they say it coats your hair. I don't care if it coats your hair, it coats my, my ends nicely and that's all I kind of care about it. As long as it's kind of making my hair look shinier and feel better, <coughs> then I'm a lot happier to be honest. There are other things that I love using like Red Ken have a fantastic oil that I also use. But this is the one if my hair is just feeling like crap. This is the one I'll go to and I'll put a 10p amount into my hands, rub it together and I'll rub it through all of the ends before I dry it and it just makes my hair feel so much better. So yeah, I can't live without that. Another one for hair, which has always been a favourite probably for the past five years, it's a GHD Curl Hold Spray. For curling my hair, this is the only thing I use. It's got heat protectant inside it, it almost acts as a curling helper. So it must have agents inside, it must have chemicals inside it that when you add heat to it, it almost starts to help um, form the hair. Almost a bit like a hairspray, it kind of helps to hold its form. I will spray this through each section of my hair like I did today. Spray it through each section, curled it, and I know it's got the heat protectant in it, and it's also going to help hold these curls now for a few days. Um, it's honestly a secret weapon. Ever since I found this, I fell in love with it. And I think I found this about three years ago when I first started blogging, and I've never looked back. I think this is the last one in hair. My favourite brush. Tangle teaser. Can't take me away from the tangle teaser. It is the best. I've got so many of these lying around the house. This one's got so much hair in it. It's disgusting. Um, I just love these. They really help to volumise my hair, I find. They don't make it static. They don't take out as much hair as other brushes do on my hair. It's a winner. Favourite eye palette. Lorac Pro 2. It was a toughie. I have the Lorac Mega Pro 2, I've got Lorac Pro 2 and I've got Lorac Pro 1 and Lorac Pro 1 is also insanely good. But I find this one is the one I go to the most, especially for more glam nighttime looks. I've hit pan on two, which are my faves. The rose gold and the champagne and the rest of the colours are just absolutely stunning. The pigmentation and the blendability of these shadows is second to none. They're so brilliant. And yeah, if you are in the UK, you can get this from Nordstrom online. I'll leave a link down below. And they do shipping to the UK. It's about £15 shipping, but this is definitely worth it, I promise you. Favourite face palette. If you know me well, you will know I have used the Anastasia Beverly Hills contour palette now. Pretty much a lot of the year. And I loved it. However, I deliberated over this before and I realised it has to be worn by the Lorac Pro Contour Palette. For a few reasons. This one has shades in it that are a little bit better for my particular skin tone. And I feel for a lot of other skin tones too. The first thing it has is the highlighter, which the other one didn't really have, and it certainly wasn't as pigmented or beautiful on the skin, so the highlighter's amazing. This shade here, I find, is a wonderful bronzer for me. So in a way, I've got a highlighter, I've got a bronzer. These two I use as my powder shades, and whilst they're very similar to the Anastasia Beverly Hills Banana Powder Contour Pan, um, these two take away shine so much better than the other one. I found 
Anastasia was wonderful. It just didn't take out as much shine as I wanted. And these really do help to mattify without clogging the face. So those two. And then this contour shade is just wonderful. And if I really want to have, if I'm more tan and I want to really darken up that contour, I'll go with this one. So I find that everything in this palette gets used and it has a mirror. And the Anastasia one didn't. So for that reason, whilst I love the other palette, this one, as soon as I got it, completely trumped it. It's just, it has everything that I can use. Whereas the other, the other palette had like one or two that I used out of six. I use all of these. I'm sorry ABH, Lorac wins in this time. I also wanted to mention one other face palette, which is more of a bronzing blush palette rather than face, so it's not cheating. And it's this one from Hourglass, which I've used to death really. It's the Hourglass Ambient Lighting pa uh, Palette. The shades in this are stunning. I often use this as a highlight mixed with this one, and this one is a highlighting bronzer and I find on the days when I just want to add glow and depth to my face. This is so beautiful. I just use a brush, work it through, work it through my contours and around like a bronzer and it's just a really beautiful palette and I used it so much I couldn't not mention it. But then my favourite bronzer most definitely is the Bronze Goddess by Estee Lauder. Huge pan, easy to sweep your brush into, it's got a mirror, I always use this mirror. When I go travelling and I'm on the road, whatever, and I've not got a mirror with me, this is the thing I pull out of my makeup bag to do my makeup with. So it's super handy, beautiful colour of bronze, nothing too glitzy glam, uh, it's also not matte either. So for me it's a wonderful, wonderful bronzer. Favourite face moisturiser, you all knew this was going to happen, it's a million dollar moisturiser from Lush. This is like a gold cream and when you put it on it just helps to illuminate the skin it adds so much dewiness that when you put your foundation over it the skin just still gleams it's like nothing else i've ever used most people only use this in summer so they look super dewy in summer i use this all year round because who doesn't want to be glowy in the winter too i do favorite eyelashes brand of the year it's got to be this one from mosquito their lashes are just the easiest i find to put on i like the packaging this white package got the cute little card inside. The eyelashes, these especially, oh so sweet, have been my favourite. Oh so sweet by Esquido. I just cut them down a little bit, but they're just more natural whilst also being enhancing. They go on much better than any other lashes I find. And with that, my favourite lash glue is also by Esquido. It's a companion long lasting bond. I just find the fact that this is a wand, you can add it along the edge of your eyelashes so much easier than using any of the other types of glue. So these two together, by far my favourite eyelashes. Favourite lip balm of the year? I have two. Because one is incredible that I've recently started using in the past two months, which I have to mention, and the other one is a long-standing one. As you'll know, the By Terry Bond Rose is a good one. My favourite shade is Rosy Babe. This one is the just original light colour. But they're so hydrating, um, they really help to plump up my lips, they add a really beautiful sheen to it. I find underneath lipstick, they're fantastic. But I'd also like to mention the Lip Glow by Dior, because this really rocked my world when I got it. The idea with this is that you put it on, it's a bit like the blush, the Dior Glow blush, in that you put it on and it reacts to your skin temperatures, so it can turn any kind of colour. But this on me I find just adds a lovely light pink sheen which is exactly what I want on my lips because I hate my normal lip colour and I like them to be lightened slightly but still look rosy and this really did it for me. A bit like how Rosy Babe did. So those two without a doubt are favourite lip balms. Favourite foundation? This was a tough one, it took me a couple of minutes to come up with this one but I think the one that I preferred the most for the perfect shade for me, the right consistency on my skin, it stayed on my skin the longest and made me feel more glam or more perfected was this one. It's the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Foundation. Granted I only used it for the past two and a half months or so to the end of the year but it really wowed me and it made me feel so much more confident when I had it on. The shade, this is shade 235 I think, and it was just a really brilliant shade for me, so by far my favourite. Favourite eyebrow product has to be the Eye and Brow Maestro from Giorgio Armani. This is in the shade number two, Wengewood. 
and it's a dark brown a really dark brown but as you know I like my dark browns I've got it on now I just felt like the consistency was perfect for me it wasn't too waxy as some can be a little bit too waxy and totally ruin your brushes this one is a great mixture of colour and wax and it just stayed on my eyebrows all day and was the perfect colour for what I wanted so had to be that one favourite mascara of the year no guesses what this is going to be, it's the Clarins Truly Waterproof Mascara. Nothing holds the curl of my lashes more than this mascara. That's all I need to say, it's wonderful. It does go hand in hand with the eyelash curlers, which are the She Yamura eyelash curlers. I'm just going to say this one last time because I say it all the time. If you are like me and have lashes that point downwards straight, get yourself a good pair of curlers like these. Curl your lashes so they're perfect, exactly how you want them to look. Then use the Clarins Truly Waterproof or the Lancome Doll Eyes Waterproof Mascara and gently brush them through and you'll find that your lashes stay all day in that exact perfect position. Better than no other. Favourite blush of the year? I've got many, many, but there's one that I always go to back to, especially for more glam looks or when I'm going out. I know it's perfect for my skin tone. And it's the Charlotte Tilbury Cheek to Chic First Love. So this is the lighter shade of blush that they do. It's a very light, mauvey pink nude shade. And when I first bought this, I honestly thought, it's not really going to show up in my skin tone. Why am I buying this? But I do really want to give it a go and give it a try. And I was totally wowed by it. It's perfect for my skin tone. A very light, nude, pink, beige flush. Beautiful. Favourite highlighter of the year? Has to be this one from Becca. It's the Jaclyn Hill. I'm pretty sure that most people will say this this year. But... I think as soon as we all found this, all the beauty bloggers or anyone that was into beauty or anyone on YouTube who loved this, I think everyone realised just how awesome it was. The pigmentation just makes your cheeks shine like the sun, like nothing else. It's so gorgeous. And you can also get this now in the UK really easily. I'll leave a link down below. So yeah, has to be this one. Getting to the bottom now, guys. Getting to the bottom. Concealers, so two I've got to mention. One isn't technically a concealer, so I'll say this one first. And it's a MAC Prep and Prime. It's more of a an eye brightening pen and I just use it in the way that Kim Kardashian would usually use it in the triangular shape underneath my eyes and then I'll pat it in and it just brightens and also it conceals very very slightly the point isn't to conceal it's to brighten and illuminate so I use that first and then my favourite concealer must have to be the MAC I think Pro Longwear Concealer it's one I've used for years and it's one I trust with all my heart but make sure you set it after you've used it because otherwise it picks up products on your face but I've got a few shades in this. This one at the moment is NC15 and it's very brightening under the eyes. Whilst also it's got a really great coverage. Quite a heavy coverage but it isn't cakey. So it will clear up all manner of under eye bags but won't be too cakey. So it's got to be the best. Favourite eyeliner has got to be this from Tom Ford. The Tom Ford eyeliner. It's double ended. One's a tiny nib, one's a longer nib. The longer nib was my favourite because it just really sweeps on. It's a jet black colour. Unless your eyes water and weep big time like mine do sometimes, this is not going to come off. It really is great for staying power. I just find it super easy to use and it's a wonderful pen. Next up is lip products. Favourite liners. Okay, I've got a few here, I must admit. Two I can't choose between because I've used them both so often and I use them interchangeably really and it's MAC Saw and MAC Whirl. They were the two shades this year that you could not get your hands on for so long. In fact, was it even last year? It could have been. Um, but these were the it colours because Kylie Jenner said should she use them or people thought that she used these, so I got them both. Um, Whirl is more of a beige tone nude, Saw so has more pink in it. But I have used these to death as my nude lip colour. I line my lips with these are almost a little bit overlining them so a little bit bigger and then I'll fill them in with a nude and I find that that's a really great nude lip for me. And then lipsticks. I know the YSL PR quite well Holly, she's lovely and I love the fact that she's almost coined this lipstick as Victoria's Nude and it's a YSL Nude Number no. 1 Rouge Volupt. It's a light nudie pink and I've worn this so many times. I think this is probably my fourth one this year. Plus the packaging is just absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I just love the fact that she actually calls this Victoria Nude, the Victoria Nude, because I wear it so much. I love this shade. But if I'm not wearing this, quite often I'm wearing this, which is the Tom Ford Nude Vanille number 12, which is very similar, if not more nude. So this one's more nude. 
this one has a little bit more pink to it. But I always have these in my makeup purse in my handbag for every single day. This is the one I go to if I'm definitely want to go really, really nude. This one helps to brighten up my skin a little bit because it's got a bit more pink. And for lip gloss, I don't wear lip gloss very, very often. And therefore, when I came across this lip gloss, I was totally blown away and in love with it. It's by Galan. And it's one of their limited edition, I think, glosses. Gloss DN4. And it's part of their Christmas collection. So I'm pretty sure you might still be able to get this, especially on counters. But I just love the consistency of this, the fact that it's not too... It's not sticky. It's not sticky at all. Adds such a brightening gloss to the lips with these little particles of glitter. And it's just stunning. I mean, look at that packaging. Beautiful, so I had to mention that. And last but not least are tools. My tool of choice. Yes, this needs a clean. I'm going to cleanse all my brushes right after this. Real Technique sponge is also brilliant. But if I had to choose between them, I'd go for the Beauty Blender. This is a beige Beauty Blender, by the way. They're usually pink, but this is a beige one. The fact that the nib is just a little bit smaller really allows you to get into the creases of your eyes better and around the edges of your nose. Ever since I found the Beauty Blender, my makeup has not been the same. It's just been ten times better than it ever was because it just allows you to really push in your makeup and make it perfected. And it's all down to this little guy. But in brushes, I have four favourites that I'm going to mention. First up is the Zoeva Lux Sheer Cheek. And this does come in a set. Again, I know it needs clean. Don't have a go at me, guys. Um, I've just literally just used this. It's the only thing I use for my blush now. It's just got a really great angle on it. It's really soft. You can just work in the cheek shade super easily. And it's the only thing I reach for. So that's first. Next up is the Real Techniques Blush Brush. And I use this for bronzing generally now. So I'll whiz it into the bronzer. And it's just got a really great soft brush that I use to wind up along the edges of my cheeks and down the contours as well as around the edges of the neck and down the nose. It's just extremely soft, it doesn't molt for me. I reach for it daily. My favourite contour brush is this one, it's the Louise Young L151 I believe, yes. I've never used contour brush better than this. The shape of it being so sort of flat and square is great for getting right into those contours underneath your cheekbones. It's just a really great shape um, and really enhanced the way I did my contour as soon as I got this. And I've run out of beauty products, that's it. Of course, I will leave all the links down below for all of these products in order. So if there's something that you liked and you didn't quite hear what I said about it, go have a look on the link. That should be nice and helpful. But yeah, I don't think I've missed anything there. That's pretty much everything for the face and the things I love the most. A lot of these things you'll have seen quite recently, probably, because I'll have used them in makeup tutorials, because I often like to use my favourite things and be honest with my makeup tutorials and use the things I actually use every single day so it's more natural. Yeah, highly recommend all of these. I'd love to know what your defining product of this year was though. Please do leave me a comment down below, let me know what you loved. I always love to find new products that I haven't used before, haven't heard about, if they're really, really loved by you guys, so let me know. Please do give this video a like if you liked it, always helps me out, just go click the like button now. Um, and also subscribe, click the subscribe button if you'd like to come back next time. As always, thank you so much for watching, I will see you again really, really soon and take care until then. Bye! Mwah, mwah, mwah.